Oh, hello guys, how you doing? Nearly went cockney again with my accent. I don't know why I started doing that. I can't promise I'm going to stop doing that though, because it's quite fun doing a cockney accent. Um, I want to talk about childhood memories with gambling, and I want you to think about your childhood memories with gambling. Now, I use the word gambling here very loosely because it's open for you to interpret, okay? And everyone's going to have different opinions on this. But for me, there's a few memories uh, that I have that I feel have contributed to me um, having problems with gambling later in life. And I didn't always appreciate or understand um, how much these moments in time affected me. And it wasn't until I sat down and started writing about it, I was like, holy shit, that's, uh, that's a bit shocking and that's a bit impactful. And I didn't think about that in a long time. And yeah, that's probably, probably wasn't normal at the time. I don't want to ramble for 10 minutes here today, okay, so I'll try and keep it going, um, but I want to point out a few of these. I want you to, to think about yourself, and without getting too personal, think about your family and their exposure, um, and see if you can relate to me, okay, and I'm just trying to stimulate a conversation. I'm not here to judge. This isn't personal, but I'd be really grateful if you guys thought about this yourselves. Um, Penny arcades, penny pushers, amusement arcades. I grew up in Aberdeen, so anyone who grows up in a coastal town will understand that down at the beach we have these amusement arcades. Um, you know, down at the seaside, you get your chips, you go in your arcade, you walk along the promenade, get your ice cream, all that kind of stuff. And you'll find this uh, very sort of um, flashy buildings with your claw machines and your penny pushers and all your games and your ticket machines and um, that kind of thing. They're often in the same buildings as over 18 um, games, but they're not very well, in my experience anyway, not very well managed. And uh, you're, there's not much difference between the machines that are, you know, paying out pennies and the machines that are paying out pounds. You know, it's the same lights, it's the same machines, it's the same building, it's the same process, you're learning the same behaviour. The only difference is, is one is deemed less damaging than the other. Anyway, rant over with that. And I'm sure you can understand where I probably stand with this. But anyway, so my very early memories is a, a holiday at Butlins and um, there was a claw machine and there was monkeys. And I'm talking about, I'm not talking about monkeys, I'm talking about maybe I was five, six, something like that. So this is how far back this goes. And uh, we're playing the claw machine. And the monkeys had Velcro hands. And um, we picked up one of the monkeys. But the Velcro had stuck to the rest. So in with picking up one, we ended up with like 10, 15 monkeys. So it was a design flaw. And uh, I remember how excited I was and how lucky I felt. Lucky is a word that I don't, I, I, I don't feel comfortable with. I very rarely wish people good luck. Um, but that's a conversation for another day. And uh, I just remember at the time, that was uh, the first time I felt lucky and uh, excited over something, which most kids would have, but it always stuck in my mind. And the claw machines were alluring for me. And even as back as um, oh, a few years ago, sitting in pubs and, you know, like your carvery type places and whatever, you, they quite often have these claw machines, I'd have a look, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd still play, and um, I'd still play after I stopped gambling claw machines every now and then, you know, for a pint in the, and then I thought, geez, uh, claw machines were quite impactful for me, I remember there was a time as well, where I'd spent all my pocket money trying to get this Kenny from South Park doll out of the claw machine, and it kept slipping, as they do, that's how they're designed, and I got so enraged, so enraged, I was maybe 10, and I went and got a manager and I complained that the machine was rigged and uh, they would stole my money, I wanted my money back and all that kind of stuff. And the manager at the time was just like, well, you know, better luck next time, mate. It just made me feel angry. And, uh, you know, fast forward 20 years, this is how people act in the bookies with the, the FOBT machines, feeling like it's rigged and they're robbed and they're complaining to the manager and, you know, so much, I mean, it's the same, yeah, it's, it's the same feeling, it's the same feeling of, you know, feeling cheated and, you know, you're out of control and you only plan to spend a pound, but, you know, you put a tenner in, whatever it is. Um, and that always stuck out in my mind. Another one is uh, Sunday newspapers. Sunday newspapers we'd get in our house all the time. So they'd be brought home from my dad, uh, from work. 
and would flip through the Sunday newspapers. But I'd always pick up the, you know, the, the trashy magazines and freebies and stuff that came with the, um, the newspapers. Because um, I was too young to read whatever, the news of the world or whatever it was at the time. And uh, there was always scratch cards. Always scratch cards that came uh, with these magazines. And uh, I'd always scratch them. And you'd always win. Because it was one of these automated call-up. And, um, you know, you could... Um, you call up this premium number and you win a pen or some shit like that. And uh, I had a few times I had done that behind my parents' back, called up uh, to see what I'd won. And it was never anything good. But I um, always remember that as well. And keeping on the theme of scratch cards, I won a PlayStation way back in the day. I always remember this because it came with a, a kid's it's soccer magazine. Why am I saying soccer? It's just because I was on a podcast recently. I had to explain uh, between football and soccer. Anyway, football magazine is called Match or Shoot. I, I read both. And uh, that came uh, with freebies and promo stuff as well. Quite often you'd get scratch cards too um, and flicker cards and stuff like that. And I remember throwing out the packaging and um, luck may have it or whatever. I remember taking the packaging out of the bin because I'd left the scratch card there on scratch. But this wasn't a scratch card. It was like a flicker, a flicker card. It was, I don't know how to describe it anyway, but there's, it was designed, ugh, it was designed like a scratch card and it was, but it wasn't, you didn't scratch. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> but I won, I won a PlayStation uh, on it and I remember the warden saying, uh, congratulations, you've won a Sony PlayStation 1 with World League Soccer game. And I was super, super excited and that made me feel lucky um, and I was uh, over the moon and uh, I'd quite often be told by people, um, oh, you're so jammy, you know, you're so lucky, oh, that could only happen to you. You know, these are quite common things that people say uh, to one another. Um, oh, you know, I can't, I can't believe, can't believe that happened, you know, whatever. Um, I feel, for me, as a person who's, uh, you know, had a gambling addiction, um, I think it just pushed me on. You know, these sort of uh, memories, um, these moments in time, I thought I didn't appreciate it then. I do feel that these are, um, you know, the, the, the building blocks for me. Uh, having a gambling addiction when I'm older and, you know, when I, into my teens and in my 20s then, it started becoming, uh, you know, my exposure, exposure to gambling was, uh, you know, football slips and, uh, um, you know, marconettes where the ball's missing on, uh, you know, it's all football magazines and it was all sort of uh, near misses and, um, just a little low-key gambling related things that I felt built up and um, on reflection I don't think any of this stuff helped me and uh, fast forward to the digital age when FOBTs, online gambling, all that kind of thing came in it was uh, a recipe for disaster for someone like me and uh, yeah, I just find it really interesting uh, looking back and stuff like that. I've got a few more examples, but I'm not going to bore you <laughs> with them. When I said I wasn't going to go 10 minutes, I'm coming up to 10 minutes. I want you to think about this yourself. Look back and uh, think about your kids too, if you have a family. And just um, let me know if there's anything now. Even in the modern age, I'd be interested to know. Um, is there things that have cropped up recently that you've noticed that you felt that's borderline gambling or um, that's just flat out gambling but dressed up as something else? I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on that because my childhood memory, I mean I'm 35 soon, my childhood memories are going to be, I mean, the experience are going to be so much different to the generation coming now. Um, I just want to start a conversation guys. Okay, so uh, let me know and uh, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching and uh, have a good weekend. Take it easy. Don't gamble.